Hey friends, this is Visionary 3D, focusing on futuristic experiments. In this devlog, I'm going to show you how I'm building my three-dimensional universe using procedural generation, generative AI, and ray marching. Procedural generation is the art of creating complex 3D structures programmatically. This technique is used in most modern games, and it works by putting a camera into your 3D world and then trying to figure out what the camera sees in your virtual environment. The algorithms that are used for doing this are crafted carefully by very intelligent game developers after years of research. However, AI content generation has become very powerful in the past year. And now I think it's time for us to build infinite 3D universes using a combination of generative AI and procedural generation. Our goal is to create an experience where we can travel to different planets and explore diverse and unexpected worlds. That's an important detail because games that do procedural world generation well already exist. But everything is handcrafted by a group of artists and developers. What I'm trying to achieve is building universes that are entirely imaginary. AIs have the power to hallucinate. What if we let them hallucinate entire 3D worlds? Today, I'm going to mainly focus on building the foundation for this hybrid world generation system. If you want to join me on this journey for building this crazy ambitious experience, consider subscribing. The environments that I showed you in the intro are a rare example of consistent and spectacular world building in the universe of Made in Abyss. Our first step is setting a goal for what we want to achieve. And why not learn from masterful art and world building? Creating an infinite amount of these incredibly diverse environments is very difficult. And often, because programming universes is a complex thing to do, you forget what you wanted to achieve very quickly, falling into a cycle of compromise. Later, these stunning environments are going to remind me of why I started this project in the first place. What you're looking at right now is one of my favorite procedural worlds, the rainforest, created by Inigo Quiles. Every structure in this painting is created with math, and the digital world it represents is infinite. We need to take three simple steps for creating a procedural world like this. Create the shapes, create the materials, and finally, render everything in real time. Step one is where we model the objects using generative AI and procedural generation. Step two is where we create textures and do lighting calculations. Step three is where we turn those objects into pixels that can be displayed on the screen. You can create the 3D forms using algorithms and in theory, you have no limitation for designing everything in your universe. But if you don't have a fast enough rendering engine to display the 3D worlds, your genius mathematical structures are absolutely useless. Starting with creating the shapes first was a mistake that I made when building my first procedural universe two years ago. But now we are smarter than that, which means we start with the rendering engine. The rendering engine decides how we are going to turn objects to pixels on the screen. For this project, I'm using a new rendering API called WebGPU. WebGPU is the technology that brings compute shaders to the web, which is fantastic because 3D web experiences are amazing. The incredible thing about a 3D web experience is that your creation can expand to the entire world with a simple website link. You can check my two previous videos on WebGPU if you want to learn more about shaders and specifically compute shaders. Before we can build entire 3D universes, we need to build individual objects. A three-dimensional object can be represented in two ways, a list of triangles or signed distance fields. A signed distance field is a function that takes a 3D point in space and tells you how far you are from the surface of the object. That's all you need to have because the surface of the object is all the points at which the SDF 
returns zero. I want this project to be future compatible. So let's imagine that in three years time, we're going to have hardware that is a million times faster. That's a wild prediction, but bear with me for a moment. Better hardware means optimization for certain applications becomes unnecessary. Optimized software is still going to exist, but this won't matter for most creative people. An example of this is JavaScript and how much easier it is to use compared to C++. Each layer of abstraction will reduce control in favor of enhancing the user experience. And in this case, in favor of the creator experience. One of the coolest things that's possible using SDFs is creating visual effects like these. The SDFs in this video are rendered using a technique called ray marching. Ray marching, aka sphere tracing, is a powerful technique for rendering SDFs. I can't imagine a future where ray marching isn't the default rendering engine because just look at this video. It's super, super cool. The problem I have with other rendering methods is that they use triangles and triangles are disastrous for procedural generation. Triangles, unlike SDFs, are really hard to edit programmatically. And there's a list of annoying edge cases that you need to handle when generating the shapes. Don't get me wrong, triangles are fantastic for static games. But I think that two or three years down the line, the incredible flexibility and beauty of SDFs becomes much more important than the little optimization boost you get from using triangles. It's a prediction. I could be wrong. This is what I call visionary thinking, which means you think beyond the present moment by asking yourself, what is the future going to look like? I decided that instead of working on this project for two years and then suddenly posting a single video about it, I'm going to share the entire process with you. Earlier this year, I implemented a ray tracer with Bloom in one of my previous videos. I took the camera controller code from that video, copied this shader from Inigo Quiles, and I put it all in a single web GPU compute shader. And with that, we're gonna get this beautiful result, which also has soft shadows as the result of copying Inigo's work. The main challenge with a ray marcher is performance, especially if you want to render complex 3D worlds. A ray marching algorithm uses the SDF function a lot. As our world gets bigger and more complex, the distance field becomes more and more expensive to calculate. The first thing that comes to mind is reducing the SDF calls, but that's a bad solution because the root of the problem is the SDF function call itself. The way you fix this problem is by making the runtime speed of the SDF function constant. I am not talking about reducing the complexity of our universe. I'm talking about how we can access the information by freezing the distance field into a texture. By saving our object into a 3D texture, the runtime of the SDF function becomes constant, since sampling from a texture is done in constant speed. If your scene is simple, doing this will actually decrease the speed of your shader. But for a complex world like what we want to build, this actually makes more sense to me. I also have some optimization tricks in mind, which I'm going to implement in future episodes. But for now, let's focus on generating the texture once and then reading from it in the ray marching compute shader. The idea is that we are dealing with a texture. You might be realizing where I'm going with this. I think that there's a possibility to generate the 3D textures using some form of AI image generation, but in 3D. Since we're working with textures, we should be able to train a model to produce 3D SDF textures based on a prompt. So we can just write a prompt and let the AI algorithm produce a 3D texture that represents the object. Then bringing that object into our world is as easy as just feeding the 3D texture into this algorithm. Isn't that visionary? We're going to create that AI model in the next episode of this series. 
To implement this idea, we're going to create a compute shader that's supposed to create the texture. Here's what that texture looks like if we visualize it in 2D. Using the texture load function, I can directly load the pixels. But the interesting web GPU functions for textures are the ones that filter and blend multiple pixels. These functions take a texture which represents the data, a sampler which represents how we want to pull data out of the texture, and a coordinate which specifies where we want to get the value from the texture. The trouble is that you can't sample the texture in a compute shader using a sampler because the derivatives aren't calculated automatically like in a fragment shader. I managed to calculate the derivatives though using some math in my compute shader. For testing the results, I generated the SDF texture of a sphere using the generator compute shader. Then I sent that texture into the ray marcher and my first attempt at doing this didn't go very well. But as you can see, I got it working in the end. The address mode of the sampler is set to repeat. That's why my sphere is repeating in all directions infinitely. What I can do though is set the address mode to clamp to edge. And that gives us a cute little sphere. The cool thing about using a texture is that you get free level of detail by changing the size of the texture. We need to also generate a texture for shading the objects. But that's a story for another video. The performance improvement journey will continue and of course we're far away from being done with generating our universe. I'm gonna show you every step of the way so let's just enjoy the ride. X is the platform where I post daily updates of my work. If you want to look into my process even further, follow me on X because that's where I post work in progress videos and things like that. If you want to work with me on a project, whether it's 3JS, WebGL or WebGPU, you can connect with me through the social media links down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.